Yeah, but congratulations on passing your PMP. Thank you. Um, I had to do it three times, but um, I think, you know, like I was telling you with through your Helena exam PM uh, program, mm -hmm. the, the, the PMP content, the course, um, yeah, it really helped me kind of break through. I had already read the book cover to cover and I had gone through three boot camps actually because I, I took one through um, my last one was InfoSec. I forgot what the first company was that I took it through, but I did InfoSec. And what's nice with them is you can repeat the course and they don't really put a timeline. It had been more than like six months since I first took it. And then I, I contacted the PLC, but they were, we were a uh, customer. Uh, I'm with the U S coast guard. I'm in the reserves. Now I was active duty, but since we sent so many of our, our coast guard members through um, InfoSec, they said, yeah, sure. Go ahead. You can pop into class anytime. So um, I took it the second time and um, I had taken the test. Actually, um, after the second time I took it, I didn't want to fail it because I was going to attempt the test for the third time. And then I found your software, which was affordable and it was effective. Um, and I think I told you I, I was I got it up on my Xbox. So I used the Internet Explorer to, through my Xbox. And I was literally using my um, Xbox remote here at my controller. And just going through the practice questions, I probably I spent probably two solid, maybe two and a half weeks going through all your practice questions, which were pretty relevant to all of that version material of the test. So um, I, I finally got confidence. I understood the processes and why I was choosing which answers, because, as you know, the PMP is a very difficult test because it's it's based on the best partially the best answer. Not, it, it's not the partially correct answer it's the, the complete answer right yeah. so yeah because sometimes the four four multiple choice questions that you get the answers could look the same so um congratulations on passing your pmp again um, oh thank you yeah so um so what made the difference between your first and second time and you know how did you stick around and you know have the motivation to do it the third time because a lot of people get discouraged um when they don't pass the first time well, one of the big uh, proponents for me was the fact uh, President Obama, before he ended his term, actually, he drafted up an executive order for um, federal government to have all um, the general service federal positions um, and senior leadership positions from, like, I believe, a GS-13 on up through SES that it was required to have uh, PMP certification. Now, what had happened is I know for Department of Homeland Security and DOD have both come up with their own project program manager uh, program, which um, is pretty much adopted all the principles of from PMI. So but of course, if you had the PMI certification, it, it's equivalent or um, kind of satisfies all the requirements for the PPM for the DOD. It's just their kind of like customized version of PMI. But to be honest with you, the PMI exam itself is much more challenging because I've gone through um, the, the DHS PPM and I was about to test out. But I, I just after pass, finally passing my PMP, I'm like, oh, I'm good. You know, having that on my job title and my email signature, um, I'm in. You know, um, I, I knew the content. It, it wasn't a question of me not knowing the material. It was just um, me getting it over the hurdle of choosing the best or the most correct answer. I was choosing good answers that were partially correct, but it wasn't the most correct. And that's that's the big difference. And the, the question exams, the, the, the actual um, question content that you had was matched up very well to the actual test that I found like more than any of the other um, the, the PMP courses that are offered for students. Right, oh, well, thank you. Thank you so much for saying that. That's so kind. Of course. Yeah, yeah. So did anything help you when you were trying to choose the right answer? Was there a strategy that you used? Um, I kind of just know it now, like kind of like the back of my hand, but was there like a thought process or methodology that you used um, that could help people who might have the same problem as in the past? Um, I would just say probably just narrowing down. I mean, two of the four multiple choice uh, answers are bogus yeah. and you have a 50-50 shot. So, um, because you're, you know, they, they took away the, um, the prep time. There was like a 10 minute prep time in the beginning where you could kind of like do a, a data puke 
um, of everything that you try to remember 30 minutes or an hour before the test. So doing that helps, obviously, the data puke of information, writing all that on your scratch paper. Um, but that does cut into your your um, testing time. So it's realizing that you're going to spend 10 or 15 minutes data puking if, if you've done it right. Um, so you got to write out all the formulas and um, some of the other um, principles of PMP that you need to remember for the test, especially all the 47 processes and the, the um, initiating and um, planning and executing, controlling, monitoring, and, and um, the closing. So, um, and all the other acronyms. So I, yeah, I, I wrote all the, uh, the fancier creative acronyms that we came up with in the course. And there were some good ones too, through exams PM as well. Um, I had one morbid one that I'll think of in a minute. Um, I stole the, I stole the cash quick, her corpse, which uh-huh. is initiating a stakeholder. Um, and it goes through all the, uh, the other processes. Yeah, but it was kind of morbid, but it was kind of like a murder uh, scenario. Um, but uh, so uh, that helped me remember. But mostly, um, like you said, you had had asked actually, what was my main strategy? It was just picking the the two most correct answers, and then really focusing on the difference between those two, and you know why they were different, and which one was the most correct answer, and which one was partially correct, and that's. That's the key to the whole test because one or two of the multiple choice uh, answers are bogus. You pretty much rule them out. So it's kind of a process of elimination. But then, you know, having those two left, which gives you a 50 50 shot at each question if you've studied well and uh, if you've done the practice, practice exam questions, which it was huge help for me. Um, I think also, too, um, that you mentioned it, my other strategy was. Taking those practice exams helps you like for the mental endurance of it. I think after getting through all the chapter quizzes that you offer through your course, um, the main part of it is doing the actual 200 question exam. Those are your mock exams. Not exactly what's in the question, but just um, being able to like run a marathon through 200 questions. Because as you know, it takes a good solid three hours, sometimes the full four. Um, to get through it. And I think I had done the the full 200 question mock exams probably four times, maybe five before I tested. Yeah. And so I really put myself through the rigor. So, cause it's like a race. I mean, if you're going to run a marathon, you don't run 26 miles the first day, you build up to that point. Yeah. So, and that's the big misconception I think a lot of people have with the boot camps is, oh, great. You know, I'll sit in class Monday through Thursday and test out on Friday. I'm like, I've got news for you. Unless you've been exposed to it, like a lot of the content, or you've got an MBA, a master's in business administration to really kind of lean back on um, for all the, the, the body of knowledge, then you're going to fail. So, yeah. and it took me two times of two failures to realize that I wasn't going to fail my third. So. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, no, that's a great point. Like a lot of people think that if they have a lot of experience, um, they can just pass based on their own experience. And you really can't because there's so many new terminologies and PMI has their own specific way of doing things. So you really have Mm -hmm. to study the content. Yeah. So in terms of your actual exam date, um, did you, what kind of questions came up more often? Like if you were to hack this, like if you could start over again, if you were to shortcut this with you know, what, what would you kind of do to, to, uh, to do that? Um, it's tough. I think just memorizing the formulas is a huge part of it. I mean, knowing all those in the earned value management and th- those equations, you've got to be able to do your data puke with that. Um, write down all the processes and the, and the phases um, and know all the other uh, interfaces. i I forget the actual terminology because it's been um, a year and a half or almost two years since I tested out. But um, so all those mini processes that go along with it, but um, there really isn't any shortcut. I hate to tell you. Um, It's just, you've got to roll up your sleeves and read the book at least once cover to cover and then um, go through a boot camp. I know it sounds pricey because it is, but if you're in a fortunate situation, 
you, you your company your employer can support you through that um, and then lastly, it, it's, it may sound like overkill, but it's not going through your course because that's just another positive reinforcement of everything that you've studied. And then the question exams, like I said, for me doing it through my Xbox one, or I'm sure you could do it on PlayStation as well, um, was great because it was almost like a video game format. You know, I had my controller again, my Xbox one controller, and I just whizzed through the questions. And yeah, some of them are problem solving. You have to take time to read, but um, it greatly helped just having it on my nice 55 inch HD TV. So I didn't get a nearsighted vision or had any focal problems reading the questions because, you know, that part of it too is like the endurance part with your eye. You got to train your eyes to keep reading through 200 questions because that's enduring and exhausting. And then mentally, you know, just solving the problem. So. Yeah. There's, I, I hate to say it, there's really no shortcut other than um, come up with, get your cheat sheets memorized, read the book cover to cover, go to a boot camp so you understand the, the, the methodology of all the processes and phases, and then study your butt off with uh, exams, PM, uh, mock questions, quizzes, and exams, so. Yeah, 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 sure. Well, that's, you know, I think that's a great advice and just, you know, keeping that rigor. Um, how did you manage to find time to study, you know, even when you're working full time and a demanding job as well? Um, that's an interesting part. I was um, in between jobs when I passed it. I wasn't before I was working full time. and That's probably why I failed the first two times is I wasn't able to completely devote the time that I had. I was I was in between jobs. I knew I was, I was being looked at for hire. Um, I had already gone in and interviewed, but it was it was for a federal position, which takes a lot of security clearance time. But it was dependent upon passing the PM, which they had full faith I would do, but I had to do it, right? So there's a big motivational factor. I did finally have the time. I spent um, probably three solid weeks. Week one was the boot camp that I took over again. And the following two weeks were your mock quizzes and exams so that's you know that the other piece too is um i'm a parent i've got two kids yeah. so I, I wasn't able to really carve out any extra time um in my night or day because you know working full-time taking care of two kids is really exhausting so uh fortunately i i was in between jobs um and um had some extra time where that third time, there was, I had no doubt. I was like, I am going to pass this test. I was 100%, 110% determined to do it, and I did it. So awesome. that's what you, you've got to, you got to see it. You got to will it. You know, yeah. you manifest it and, and study hard, roll up your sleeves and just do it. It'll, you'll, you'll achieve it. So yeah, no, I think that's probably the best advice is to see it, to believe it. And, you know, it's because mm -hmm. if you can see it from the inside, that's when you can really manifest it into your life as well. So I think that's a piece of advice that not many people talk about because they always talk about, um, you know, the tactics of, you know, this type of question that you, this is how we handle it. So of course now people talk about the mindset of going in, um, going into the exam as well. So thank you for bringing up that point. Um, yeah. And um, absolutely. Yeah. So um, what did your study plan look like? Like how did you study? Um, we talked about uh, the actual exam. What did you, you know, um, what did your study plan look like when you were studying for it? Mm, I mean, it's as you know, you have to study all the the yeah. knowledge body areas because um, you've got to get at least uh, moderately proficient um, in every category, which is what I did. I wasn't, I, I forgot what the qualitative um, the testing uh, was, but I, I was moderately proficient in everything, which I did. Mm -hmm. um that's i think it's strongly proficient or um yeah. is the next one up from that but um yeah it was moderately proficient everything and not not below proficient anything so that helps if you're able to you know not completely master everything but have a solid uh foundational understanding of the transition of all the phases and processes and how they link together so yeah. Um, again, the, the, the big challenging part is if you're already a project manager and you have real world experience, it, your, your mind conflicts with the test, with the, with the, the testing material, because it's not real. They're not real world answers. I mean, yeah, there's, there's good tools and 
information and applications to it, of course. But even um, the PMI, if you go to any boot camp, will tell you this is not viable. These are all like best practice scenarios and most correct answers. They're not the absolute correct answer because there is no absolute correct answer. So it's just kind of removing yourself from being a real world PM and just studying what PMI uh, expects you to, to pass and be proficient with. So that was the other major hurdle. Yeah, for sure. And how did our course in exam simu- like from exams PM help you um, during this, uh, this journey? Well, like I said, it was kind of like a three pronged approach because um, the first prong was um, going to boot camp and then, you know, reading the book cover to cover. Yeah. And then um, the third prong was your your course, yeah. uh, Exams PM, which did did all the positive reinforcement of everything I had learned. Yeah. And then uh, getting that marathon mental endurance practice mm-hmm. in for the questions. Yeah. A, the questions, just lasting 200 questions, but understanding the content and the most correct answer. So Right. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's a pretty unique way to use our course. Um, this is actually probably the first time I heard it, um, that you're using it yeah. as a reinforcement tool and to, yeah, Xbox. Yeah, Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the first time. Hey, I'm a big kid at heart. I play video games. And when I saw I could, I could pull your, your course onto my, yeah. you know, 55 inch with my Xbox, I'm like, this, this is what, this is my language. It's, it's right up my avenue. Yeah, I'm so glad I did help you. Um, do you have any other tips to share with with people potentially who are getting ready to take their exam? Besides, uh, what- don't get discouraged. You know, even if you have to go it two or three times like I did, you'll. I mean, if if you see yourself in this role, you hit, you have good leadership, and you love, you're a personable, natural leader. You like teams and projects. You know, getting from point A to point B, or maybe alternatives, and that whole reiterative cycle that is waterfall and agile um this is just a start um but don't get discouraged you will pass it if you're determined and want to do it it's a big breakthrough because after i got certified um i've had like two jobs already as a project manager i was already doing it with the military um unofficially as a as a program project manager but now i'm able to get private sector jobs where before I'm a, I'm a master chief in the U S coast guard and now in the reserves. So, um, of course I've gone through enough military and, and federal program project management courses and, and just by rank alone, they put me in a position of power. But, um, when you go out to the private civilian sector, that's not the case. So, um, all the time, a lot of the time. So you have to have that certification. So just realize it takes you two or three tries. Don't get discouraged. You will do it. And once you've done it, I mean, the sky's the limit. So um, there's other certifications after that. I highly suggest uh, doing Scrum, Scrum Master, and um, probably Six Sigma. I've also got that as well. So I, I didn't get Scrum Master, but I've got Six Sigma. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's another good one to do. So you get that statistical analytics work in there too. Yeah, 